in this video we are going to pick a very typical scenario uh, that comes uh, in day-to-day -day life of a data power developer the scenario is that you have some users defined in active directory or any ldap system and uh, their credentials are coming as part of the request from data power you are supposed to reach out to the ldap system validate the credential with the help of that and if everything is clean and green then you allow the user to access the resource in this scenario user credentials are not stored on data power rather an integration between data power service and ldap is required we are going to talk about this scenario today so without further a delay let's get started about it to demonstrate you this practically i have created a multi protocol gateway as you can see called ldap based auth demo now this has this is a simple http based multi protocol gateway which has a processing policy this processing policy is here and simply this processing policy says that as soon as the request comes we are going to hard code some of the employee information we are going to convert it into the json and we will return it back to the caller this is to mock uh, calling a backend getting a response of course in this small demo i cannot really connect uh, to the backend hence uh, this is a simpler way of getting or uh, setting some data and returning it back to the caller in this entire uh, policy you can see that i do not have any kind of security built in meaning there is nothing that is challenging the user uh, for credential and uh, there is no provision over here where we try to authenticate the user and see whether he is okay or not and then only allow the access of resources so that's fine we will achieve it um, in uh, in a while but let's test this service for a moment to see uh, what it gives so it's a simple http based service i'm going to send the request you can see that i get a response http response code 200 and this is the data i get so <clears throat> this is this is what happens in a good scenario meaning that uh, the service invocation is good and we are able to get the data now let's go back to our scenario where we need to protect this service uh, ensure that client credentials are coming as part of a user request and if uh, they are coming then we need to reach out to the ldap uh, server for uh, authentication piece and uh, only if it is clean and green we'll be able to uh, we, we allow the access of resources to do that i have set up a ldap this is open ldap you can set up on your local laptop as well and here you can say that you have a user defined so i have defined two users over here one is required uh, this is uh, the user uh, display name is ajitab sharma and uh, the username is ajitab and the password in this case is uh, same as username for simplicity i have kept it okay so this is the user over here now our goal is to connect with LDAP and get the user validated in real time. So how it will happen? It will happen with the help of a AAA policy. Let me uh, kick off creating a AAA policy over here. So I'll type in AAA. Click on add button. Along the way, I will elaborate nuances associated with that so while it loads okay fine so let me uh, give it a name uh, maybe access policy 001 and in the main tab you have so many fields you might be wondering what we have what you have to fill and what you do not have to fill surprisingly you don't have to fill any 
except LDAP version. So choose the version which is right as per your LDAPs. Older LDAP support V2, newer LDAP support only V3. In my case, I need to choose V3 else it will not work. So that is the only option you change in main tab. In identity extraction, I'll keep it simple. I'll say, okay, my credentials are coming as part of HTTP authentication header, which means uh, as a basic authentication mechanism. Now, under the authentication, uh, the by default, the method selected is LDAP server. There are so many over here, and it would be difficult for me to talk about all of them. Maybe perhaps I can build uh, uh, videos on uh, some of them later on, but uh, for now, let's choose the bind to LDAP server. Here is the host and port. So connecting with LDAP server is like connecting with a database. And what do you need to connect with a database? You need to connect, uh, you need host name, you need port number, you need the table name from where uh, you have to query things. And uh, perhaps you need some kind of username and password as well. So in our scenario, the host name is going to, going to be, uh, coming like this 192 192.168.1.32 192.168.1.32 you might wonder saying what is this what kind of ip you have put here see this ldap server that i i discussed uh, it is running on my local as a docker instance okay so um, I have to put an IP address over here, which using which IBM Data Power Appliance, which itself is a Docker, can reach out to it. Okay, so that's what that's what for my system I have put it like this. In your case, this host name and port number will come from your LDAP administrator. So 389 is the port number because that's what I know. So um, uh, this is server host and port I specify. Now comes the table name see uh, ldap is a network database okay and um, i i told you that we need a table name tables are concept in rdbms there is no concept of as such table in um, uh, the ldap so the the way it works is look at this um, i go back to this thing now you see uid this user is inside this okay so if you click on this user there is a dn distinguished name displayed here this distinguished name is the fully qualified name of this user and this consists of its user id and uh, it's uh, and other string like ou is equal to users ou is equal to system so for all practical purposes anything other than uid will act like a table for you so this string ou users ou system is something that you have to fill in here this comes under dn suffix ou is equal to users ou is equal to system in your case it might be different there might be more than one parts of this so in in my case there are only two tokens over here in your case there could be four five six depending upon your uh, hierarchy but i just told you from where to pick this right so you select this item and then you have a dn displayed and here o everything after uid is your string that goes here it's practically acts like a table now in the dn prefix you have to just remove it and make it uid why because in our case i intend to send the user id to the ldap okay but just the user id no bottom c it says ldap search attribute user password which means i intend to send the user id and password user password to uh, ldap system and the i'm asking ldap system to validate this user id and password combination and that the ldap should be able to do any other combination over here is not useful for you at the moment um, items like tls client profile or proxy profile these are these are useful in the case when you are dealing with ldap s protocol uh, ldap secure protocol but for now I, i'm not going into that complexity i'm keeping this thing simple focusing on the ldap 
um, LDAP authentication. So I said UID is equal to, from where did I get this idea? See here, it says UID is equal to. So although the default value CN was here, I changed it to UID, okay? And then user password is over here. Um, we'll, we'll keep it as is. And my authentication piece is okay. In credential mapping, I will say none. For now, no mapping. In resource extraction, I will simply select this. In resource mapping, none. In authorization, I will simply say allow any authenticated client. See here, uh, there could be a scenario where uh, your organization may want to authorize the user uh, if it is part of only a certain group. So that complication could be here, right? In that case, you need to select this uh, check membership in LDAP group and there is a separate configuration for that because this video will get a lot longer. Hence, I'm skipping that piece. Maybe I can make another video on that. But for now, allow any authenticated client means if authentication is successful, consider authorization is successful there is nothing i need to do in post processing i just need to click on apply once i clicked on apply button i have a triple a policy ready this triple a policy will expect a uh, user credential as part of http authorization header will extract from it will pass it on to the ldap if ldap says okay things would be good it will allow it otherwise it will not but this AAA policy alone will not do good. Here, you need to come back to the processing policy. In the request rule, I'm going to drag and drop. So I just dragged and dropped AAA over here. Double click to open it. And click on the apply policy. So now my policy is ready. This policy is automatically attached here as part of multi-protocol gateway. I don't have to do anything. But I still want to enable the probe because probes are a very good way to check what's happening, especially in case you have AAA uh, part of the policy. So now I come back to my client. And remember, I did not make any change over here. There is no authorization I'm sending. I'm just sending body. Earlier, it worked. It gave me this data. But now, let's send it. Now you can see I'm getting 401 unauthorized. Yeah, this is expected because now my policy is protected and I'm getting some error over here. So what happened in this case? Well, let's go back, refresh the probe and check. You're looking at the request rule and you can see that after AAA policy, it broke. All right? It broke over here. Why did it broke? What? Because here you can see that in the extract identity, there is no username, which means that because there was no username sent, this AAA policy was unable to extract the UID and password and further all further processing uh, got halted. Let's flush this. So now in the second step, we are going to send the request with basic auth. But this time, I'm going to purposefully send a bad password. Maybe, correct? This is not the password. The actual password is stored in LDAP is this. But now I'm sending a bad password. Let's see how data power responds. Send it. Well, you still get 401. Okay. But what, what does our probe says? Show the probe. And now you can see that it, it's still um, it's showing error after AAA, which it should. But this time, here, you can see that binding to the LDAP server failed. Cannot authenticate the user. This is because you, we are sending the wrong password to it. So, now, in my third attempt, let's send the correct password. So here, send it the correct password. And you can see that you got a status code 200 HTTP and uh, the data back, the one that you should see. So this demonstration tells you 
how to integrate your data power with LDAP server as far as service authentication is concerned. This is one of the most or you can say a widely used feature in data power and you will need it um, in everyday developer life. So this is what is the AAA policy. There can be many variations of it as I said um, and uh, discussing all those variations may not be possible in one video but I will certainly try to um, bring certain essential vari uh, variation or popular variations and will try to create uh, videos around it. But that's all for uh, this video. Thanks for watching.